Look at this. Don't you hate it when you do that? He clicks right next to the mineral patch, but not on it, and so all these guys are not mining. And then when they do start mining, they start on the opposite side of the patch. It's really silly. I don't think that puts you too far behind, but it's I always hate it when that happens by accident. Uh, so this is the six racks into Expo TVZ style, which you've asked me about repeatedly and said that you like. And again, StarCraft is a game. Do whatever's fun. Uh, so I will offer the advice that uh, six racks TVZ opening doesn't work because it's entirely reliant upon the element of surprise and Zerg can easily scout it, man. They have overlords that can just fly in and see it. Um, so the first couple of marines go down and, and, and secure your low ground. Again, also, it's because there's no gas for a really long time and no expo early, you end up on pure unupgraded marine. And pure unupgraded marine is not good in TVZ uh, or TVP. It's really not good just in general. Um, so it's possible to win a lot of games with the element of surprise with builds like this. So right now the Zerg didn't scout it. But again, he could have. He could easily have scouted it and a lot of Zergs will. He didn't and so he has no units whatsoever and you show up with a million, uh, million Marines and get to do some damage and chase him away. And that's cool. And that'll happen sometimes. But even when it happens, it doesn't win you the game, and it doesn't even really put you that far ahead. Uh, so you come up with four more marines, and then four more marines, and then four more marines, and if, once he realizes that these marines are going to keep coming, he's just going to start massing speedlings, and speedlings just rip marines to shreds unless you have at least 20 marines in a ball. Um, so this is a great 2v2 strategy. This The opening... No gas, get 16 marines as quick as you can, throw down 7 racks and then just cut SCVs and mass marines or expo and keep making SCVs. Great. But as a 1v1 strategy it's just not viable because every every loss that you sustain is a win for your opponent. Whereas in 2v2 like your 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 ally can make up for some of that, like it's okay to take insane risks and, and cut economy in order to do stu cool stuff. But think about it man. Um, at six minutes, you have, you should have 24, but let's see, you have 23 workers on eight patches, right? You're already three workers past max saturation. So every worker you make from now on is not doing anything. If you look at your income right now, it's 980, right? If we fast forward, you're going to make more and more workers, which is, you know, great. It's good that you're making more and more workers, but look at your income. It's staying the same. You got the same income, and you've got it's eight minutes now. You have thirty workers, and that's great. You want thirty workers at eight minutes, but you have the same income as you had at uh, what's it called at six minutes, basically. So you're going from eight hundred up to a thousand, depending on how many mules you have down. So it's like nine hundred, a thousand, nine hundred, a thousand. So you this bill just doesn't get any money, uh, and you were able to trade evenly and you were able to keep the zerg down to 26 workers and that's a good start that's nice i like the aggressiveness i like the pressure you weren't even able to kill the queen as soon as he gets speed the whole rush is just kind of gone and especially if he also gets spines so it's like an opening mass marine is an opening and it's only viable until about six minutes or whenever he gets speed it's the same as uh, in tvp if you're gonna go early marine you gotta kill him before warp gate tech is done or else those marines are just gonna get ripped to shreds um luckily for you he kind of suicides into your marines there uh m mass clumped up unupgraded marines are good against certain things uh... they're great against too few lings, right? They're actually great against almost any number of lings that is less than the dollar value of your marines. Uh, but they're terrible against banelings, even just a couple of banelings. Uh, and they're terrible against ultras. They're so bad against ultras. They're they're actually quite bad against roaches. Stim marines are okay against roaches, but only if you focus fire and only if he can't retreat. And most zergs are able to retreat, and then they have burrow and they heal up their roaches. And uh non-combat shield marines with no stim also quite terrible against roaches just generally marines only do well once you have these two upgrades and you're not even getting them until 14 minutes out 
So this did give you an economic lead. I'll give you that. You have mined a lot more money than your opponent, and you have a much bigger army than your opponent, and you're just way ahead of your opponent. But this is just because your opponent is not handling this, this push. Uh, he didn't handle the aggression very well, right? Handle it! Uh, it would have been much better if uh, you'd gotten gas once you had 26 SCVs or something. Even if you're not spending the gas, the SCVs that you would be putting on gas, they, they would otherwise be doing nothing. So at least now they're getting gas that you're not spending. It's better to have a bunch of gas that you can't spend than just not have anything. Uh, the, the expo is also kind of, kind of important. And the upgrades, man. Anyway. So yes, I see what you mean about this opening. I like that it, it obviously puts you ahead in this game, even though your opponent should have been able to see it coming and should have been able to handle it pretty well. Um, he lifted his spine, you get a free spine kill, you get to kill some drones, he makes lanes, and he rips you to shreds. The, that tiny number of marines is able to kill four marines. He heals up his queens. Has to stop mining his natural almost altogether. Finally pushes you back. Like, you know, that went okay. You did as much damage as you took, and you ended up with 31 workers and a, and a mule against 28 workers. You know, like, you didn't really end up far ahead, but it, you broke even, and at least you're not way behind. But, I don't know. There are better ways to not be behind at this point in the game, I think. I'm okay with two racks pressure because it gets you a four minute and fifty second expo, uh, while also forcing the Zerg to respond to the to the Marines that are coming. But four racks pressure, five racks pressure, it just seems like you're delaying your expo an awful lot for very little benefit. So now we we run into the passivity problem, at least according to the name of the replay. This replay is named "I opened five racks and then I was too passive." Again, you make these engineers bays, but you don't use them. And making double engineering bays implies that you want double upgrades, but you're not even getting one upgrade, let alone two. Uh, this is this has been every game I've watched of yours. This has been a problem. Upgrades. You got to prioritize upgrades, man. Um, and I think what happened here. Right is you have a lot of things you want to spend your gas on and you don't have a lot of gas coming in so you have to choose what to do first. So you have the starport, you have the factory, you need to get you need to get siege mode, you need to get tanks, uh, you need to get reactors on these on these racks and you need to use the engineering base and you need to get an army so that you continue can continue your upgrades. But think about it, which is more important, starting the upgrades or getting the armory so that you can continue them? Which is more important, getting more than one tank or having siege mode on the one tank you have? One siege tank is not going to do anything. So this siege mode is just gas that you took away from the, the upgrades. Getting reactor cores or getting your upgrades started. More marines or better upgrades on the ones I have. I actually kind of agree that the reactor cores probably were the right call in, in that regard. Um... But yeah, and if you're finding that you end up with not enough gas and too many things to spend it on at a certain point in the game, get gas sooner, and I, I really do think you should have gotten gas sooner with this build. Five depots at once because you supply blocked. Good, good, good. I would, uh, the way building stuff works, right, if you make nothing for a long time and then you make five buildings at once, the problem is you would think that having one SCV make five buildings would give you the same amount of time spent not mining as having five SCVs make one building and then immediately go back to mining but it's not true because often your base is above soft cap saturation right so right now you have 16 SCVs here and like a bajillion SCVs here so with a bajillion SCVs here having one of them not mining in, in order to make buildings has a zero impact on your on your income but if you pulled five of them off then instead of being four over saturation now you're you're cutting into your saturation by one scv so whereas making two depots at a time would be completely free as far as lost mining time making five at once is not free anymore um so just you know always try to have as few workers making buildings at a time as possible while also making enough buildings and that just means constantly making buildings all game instead of just trying to have one specific moment in your build where you throw down 20 buildings and it's not that important but you know it's worth mentioning at least so you're up 70 supply but you're not 
you have no plans to move out at all. Uh, you're securing a third as a PF, but you don't have your army near it. So if he just ran in, blew it up with banelings, and then ran away, you would have no time to react. You do have this watchtower, but you don't have any vision up here. So he can get all the way to your third without you seeing him. There, you moved some tanks down to defend it. You got your marines on patrol spread. I would say at this point, you're pretty far ahead. I mean... And it's not like you're far ahead because you screwed over the Zerg. He kind of screwed himself. Again, just like the previous replay that I watched of yours that was TVZ, he made his 59 workers and just stuck with it. Most Masters League Zergs are going to make their 90 workers and stick with it. That this, this Zerg was like, this is enough workers to do what I want to do. I'm not making any more. And that's just a silly rookie mistake. You know, he's in a lower league. You expect that kind of stuff from him, and he did it. So, uh... You know, I'd caution you about getting too much practice at doing things that aren't going to work once your opponents stop being idiots. Right? Because if you learn a good build now, it'll work both now and later. Whereas if you, w if you learn a, a bad build now, it'll only work until your opponents get good enough to stop it. Um, and that might be a heck of a long time because you only play one game every three days, right? Because you have five kids. Uh, so maybe it's not so big of a deal to, to, to learn this kind of stuff, but you know, there's just a side benefit to doing more valid builds. I do like the way you transition this build. Again, you're not using both of your engineering bays all the time. You've got a lot of idle workers. You've got 62 workers on one and a half bases, which is just ridiculous. And this is all because you don't feel like it's safe to push out anywhere, right? Um, and that's a big problem in TVZ for everyone with every build. Uh, is it's always hard to, to feel like there's a, a way to just move around. Like in TVT, you, you constantly have this ball of m and and medevacs, and you can move it around, check if his third is up, move around, check if his fifth is up, you know, move around, defend your third, move around, defend your natural. Uh, and in TVZ, if you do that, he's going to wait until he sees it in the right spot and ambush it from multiple sides, fungal growth, and kill all your crap. So TVZ is, it's called map control. TVZ is the, the build, I mean the, the matchup where Terran has the hardest time getting good map control. This is a great drop. Um, and oh, I, I, don't, I don't like the pickup because he already had investors there. Either pick up earlier or don't pick up at all. And definitely unload now because you don't want to lose all this stuff. In the yeah, good, you're unloading right into Bane. Like, that's perfect, that's perfect. Again, rookie mistake from your Zerg opponent to leave the Banelings underneath the, the Metadons, but that drop traded in really well. You got like a thousand bucks up on that, I would say. Nope, you didn't, you only got like five, four hundred bucks up. Anyway, you did pull a little bit ahead from the drop. So one thing to, to, to worry about is anytime you do a triple Metavac drop while the rest of your army is doing nothing, this is like saying have a third of my army, you know? You're, you're hoping that his army is super far out of position and, and completely fails to deal with this drop. And lucky for you, it was super far out of the position, and he did kind of fail to deal with this drop. But that's just dumb luck. If you attack in multiple places at once, or if you even if you take three marines and you push out to this base, and he kills it, and you look and see at what percentage of his army he used to kill it, then you know that his army is out of position, instead of just hoping that it is. Um, so attacking multiple places at once is, is important, especially in TVZ where you don't have the map control to use to, to really think from where his army is. The only way to get an idea of where his army is is to like move your whole army across the field and, and hope you find it. So you're still way ahead. <coughs> Anytime you spent your, your army spending is equal to a Zerg's, you're way ahead. Because uh, their infrastructure costs like 20 times less than ours. So if you guys both get the same amount of money, he's always going to have a higher army spending than you. So if you got if you have the same army spending as him, that means that you got more money than you. Great. Uh, you massively mopped up that. He kind of suicided his army and his investors into you. I I like the marine tank play. I think you've done well with marine tank. You know since since we first started talking, and I do I do like that you go for a marine tank composition in TVC. I think this is very your style. You should really stick with it. Um, but you got to realize that even one factory making tanks uses up one and a half geysers worth of gas. Like that's a lot. And if you want to get upgrades for your infantry as well, you really need a lot of gas. Uh, 
really early. So I would I would say that the the multi marine multi racks marine no gas opening is like counterproductive. <laughs> As far as that's concerned, as far as getting en enough tanks to to start your marine tank stuff, this is good again. You're you're keeping your your marines and tanks together. You're not getting killed by mutatutalists. He's got a billion lings and he's had a billion lings all game. Um, and a marine tank with a couple of medevacs is a valid way to deal with mass ling baneling, but it's it's really tempting to make some hellions because. <laughs> The, whenever I see this many lings, I'm always like, oh, you know what I would hate if I were that zerg? Running into some blue flame hellions and losing $500 of lings and not killing anything. That's what I would hate. Uh, he's going to knock down your base again. With lings and bane. That should basically never happen. Uh, lings should never be able to kill a, a planetary. As soon as you see the lings on your minimap, you should surround the PF and hold position. And the lings, by default, won't attack your SCVs as long as they're not repairing it. Uh, and I like that you're keeping forward map control. This is great. Your money is not getting super high. You've you've had a problem throughout, you know, forever of not dropping your mules in the late game, uh, and you're continuing to have that problem. But it's it makes a lot of sense because you don't have any mineral patches to drop those mules on. You haven't been able to secure any other bases, and uh, securing bases in TVZ is all about forward map control. Once you take this watchtower, you can take this base, this base, and this base. Um. Especially if he doesn't have this one. Uh, because he, he comes out of here and he runs into your army. He goes over here and he runs into your army. There's no path to the northern side of the of the map once you hold this position with your siege tanks. So learn like all of the maps have positions like that where you can cut the map in half. Uh, and you should learn where to go in each map to do that. Because once you've, once you've cut the map in half and he can't get to knock down your, your PFs anymore... You can just throw up bases everywhere and just constantly be throwing up new bases. So you starved to death and lost, but you played a lot better than him. You got a lot more workers, a lot more money, the, and each engagement went really well. You did a lot more damage than you took. The problem was that he just de denied your ability to get another base. And this is what Zergs always want to do. It's They win on map control. They win on preventing you from getting bases. And uh, you got to be wary of that and just constantly be throwing down more bases and trying to take new ones. It's a lot easier to secure two bases at once than it is to secure one base, because if you throw down one PF, he's going to kill it. But if you throw down two PFs, it would cost too much for him to kill both of them, so he's just going to either kill one of them or kill neither. And as a Zerg, if I scout that he has a PF and just his main and natural, I'm like, all I have to do is kill that one base, and he's starved. I win the whole game. But if I scout that he has this base, this base, and this base, even if there's only like you know 15 workers at each... Yes, he has the same income as a guy who only has one one PF, but now I feel like there's nothing I can do to stop him from mining, you know? So it's 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 a good tactic to try to secure a forward position like this with lots of tanks and your marines, like eight marines in front with all of your medevacs and then a bunch of marines in back. Uh, and then go and throw down a bunch of CCs, or whatever, you know? Or, or you know, pre-build CCs and then float them everywhere. Error aware, error aware, and one problem with that is the passivity problem in TVZ. If he gets to tier three, you suddenly have a lot of problems. And if you set up a forward position, you're not being passive, even if you are. Even if you don't move forward with that tank push, the fact that it's so close to him means that he's afraid to do counterattacks. Because if he counterattacks, you're just going to take your army that's already inches from his natural and kill his natural. So it makes the Zerg a lot more timid in the harassment that is so important to his playstyle. And it's just generally good. Um, so I don't know what to say about getting starved to death. Don't get starved to death, but whatever. Uh, as far as this opening is concerned, did you like how this played out? I mean, it put you ahead. But it only put you ahead because your Zerg opponent was kind of an idiot about it in the way that he handled it. If he had just said... if he'd had an, He has overlords here and here. If this overlord knows you don't have an expo, then this overlord should immediately find out what's in your base. If he sees these five racks, he says, oh, okay, makes five spines and double pumps queens until he has six or seven repaired spines immune to marines, <laughs> you know? I mean, not repaired, uh, healed with queen transfuse. 
Uh, and those queens can be used later on for injects and creep spreading, so it's not like they're wasted money. And now that they have five range, they're actually even just good defensive units for fighting. And uh, the spines all game long can be used to help push the creep forward and whatever. Um, and the biggest benefit of that, I know that spines cost money, but if you're not making lings and you're not making evo chambers and baling nests, you can just constantly be producing more and more drones. And uh, just the safety that he gets from knowing that you're making a bunch of unupgraded marines and that he has a bunch of spines and queens allows him to pull way ahead on economy. Um, but I don't know. Again, there are lots of strategies with an easy counter that still are good strategies because people don't use the easy counter. Like the three racks push that I was talking about, all Terran has to do to live through that is make one bunker on the high ground. And he wins. He wins the whole game just by making a bunker. And still, you win like half your games or more in TVT doing that strategy. So it's a good strategy even though it has a ridiculously easy counter. And this that's kind of the same that goes for this. Like by making all these marines, sure, you'd get monstrously dominated by someone who just emphasized defense and drones and then came out with a billion Ling Banelings at once and just ripped you to shreds right now. Uh, but even though people know that in their minds when you to ask them offline while it's while you're playing sometimes it's hard to to change your game plan enough to deal with a non-standard strategy like this so this is a good old-fashioned non-standard strategy and and you know try it yourself see how how often it puts you ahead see how much you like it um but i would also say that get gas earlier get gas at six minutes and start your your stim and combat shields with your first hundred and then your next hundred gas should be stim and then combat shields and then uh, engineering bay plus one and then factory and then uh, reactor cores right then probably starport and medevacs and, and until you have four medevacs don't even start the second engineering bay or the armory just go plus one and then plus one armor and then you have four medevacs then you go down for another engineering bay and an armory and then you continue double upgrades from there um, but yeah anytime you're, you're planning on making a crap ton of one unit you want to upgrade that unit to all get out man like mass marine upgrade them uh, and obviously you want to do the damage that the push is meant to do before you start worrying about the upgrades but then you know you're stuck with all these marines if they're not upgraded what use are they anyway good job